What's poppin' is your boy Mike Powers, and if you are a regular viewer of this channel, you probably know what's coming next. Hit the lights! For my real hip-hop heads only, I have a saying, T-I-M-E, time is my enemy. For time is such a thing that is impossible to possess. The thing that is said to heal all wounds can at times exacerbate them. Time is that intangible which my next guest has utilized to perfect the work that has brought him to this moment. The ferocity of his delivery speaks to the urgency of his endeavor. His bars are wielded as a scalpel, lacerating each track with the hunger of a young man who has yet to reach his pinnacle. Perseverance, the one true adversary of time, is something that the MC on the left side of your screen possesses in spades. I swear you can hear him a decade ago eviscerating rappers that have since decided to hang up the mic. And we have not done him justice in the interim. Pretending that he is not what he is ends for you half-ass spitters today. Right here, right now, because for the first time, ladies and gentlemen, on the Mike Power Show, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to the author of the critically acclaimed album, Playoff Rondo, and an MC whose spirit may only be described by this fly-ass host as indomitable. Oh. For those of you looking for an MC's MC, I present to you, live from New York, Pro Motherfucking Dillinger! Oh. Mm. 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 Just like that. Yes. Intro King. You heard? Thank you. Thank These you. These niggas well, better stop fucking playing with you, Mike Powers. <laughs> Talk to him. Talk Intro I King, nigga. Intro King in the Dirt Lord. Right now. Hey. Hey, I'm humble and I'm honored to have you on this show. I've been following you, I think, ever since I played My Heater. That's mm. Smash with you and D Stallone. Shout out Ooh. to my brother. And um, murdered that track. I said, who is this guy? They said, Pro Dillinger. Love the name. Love the voice. Love the hunger. Love the energy. Love the bars. Love the stick to And now you hear. So let's talk about it then. Uh, it, there are a lot of references to the street life on your projects. Um, yeah. I often, I often assume that these stories are true from rappers. Um, I'm assuming <sighs> the same for you. Uh, can you talk to me about your ups and downs in the streets? Uh, anybody that knows, you know what I'm saying, knows that when you when you play like that, there's always ups and downs. It's always going to be ups and downs. You know what I'm saying? And that's if you're a scammer, a hustler, a gangster, you know what I'm saying, or a stick-up kid, whatever your, whatever your, what, uh, your poison is or whatever, it's always going to be ups and downs, bro. You know what I'm saying? So I remember I was winning at one point. I remember I was broke at other points, you know what I'm saying? And now I'm just kind of, you know what I'm saying? I'm, Are we I'm, now in the, like <laughs> I'm in the black, you are Right. <laughs> So we don't want to we, we want to make sure we keep you safe, but is it safe to say we little bit one foot in, one foot out? We right there with it right now. We yeah, all the way. It's, it's fair to say that. It's fair to say that. You know, okay. I don't want to I don't want to say right. too much. But... We, we didn't say it quite enough. Um, you right. came out with the song Tattoos on My Body seven years ago. That's a fact. Uh, you've been at it a minute. Uh, what's that seven years been like? I know you've been rapping for longer than, because I got stuff on you from like nine years ago, right? But mm -hmm. what's it been, the seven years been like uh, in the interim? Since Tattoos on My Body? Yeah. You know, that was like one of my biggest songs ever, like, but locally, you know what I mean? Like a lot of the, a lot of people from my hood really, really um, supported that song and supported that project. That, you know, I mean? once I realized that I could be, one of the greats, I stopped aiming locally. Okay. Yeah, because that song right there, it's a really, really good song. You hear bars on there too. You mm -hmm. got the energy. Mm -hmm. You still have like, that, that young bull energy. Yeah, I had the young bull energy still, right? Like, yeah. like life since then has changed for me. You know what I'm saying? I have more children. Okay. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm a married man now. You know what I mean? I'm a business owner. You know, 
I'm um I'm 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 responsible for other people's careers and, and helping them move forward as well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So there's other things that I do right now that the streets can't play into. Well, so in the video from nine years ago, the name of the song is On That Bullshit. Really good mm. song. You have a copy of the 48 Laws of Power sitting on the table. Is that right? Okay. Does that book have any significance in shaping who you are today? It does. I feel like a lot of the things in the... All right, so now me, I'm the way I feel, I, I was raised a little different. My father was a really solid dude, and um, he was very literal and very uh, uh, deliberate. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He didn't really hold no punches and no shit like that. He was like a man's man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? If yep. he was wrong, he'd tell you he was wrong. Right. If he... If he wouldn't, he don't snake no, he wasn't backdooring and snaking niggas. Like if my pops, when he was a gangster, he was taking things. Like that was his shit. Yeah. So he always raised me like that. Like, you know, it take, it, uh, anybody could steal, you know what I'm saying? That shit's for cowards, you know what I'm saying? A real nigga take what he want, you know what I mean? Like, if you really gonna take something, take it, you know, don't yeah. steal it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so I, I applied that, you know, and I mean, I applied that to every aspect of my life. The 48 laws of power, okay, yeah. boom. To me, when I read that, right, you know what I mean, the, the few times that I that I dipped into that book, it's kind of like, to me, a lot of that shit is snake shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, never let them know your plan, and you sneak around the corner and surprise your enemy, and whoop de whoop de whoop Like, a lot of that shit is snake shit. Some of the shit you can apply to your real life, but a lot of the shit is like backdoor snake shit. If a real nigga really look into that book, that shit don't apply to all of us, mm. because all of us ain't built like that. Right. Right. So a lot of the things in the 48 laws of power, I apply, you know, the things that are practical and useful to a man such as myself. That's not into none of the snake in the back door and the weird shit. What is Scum Squad? Okay, boom. Scum Squad originally. Damn, nigga, you like Nardwar, bro. You like, you know who Nardwar is? Yes. You like, you really be doing your research, man. Yes, like, that's crazy. Like, <laughs> yes. you, uh, <laughs> yeah. you like Nardwar. All right, boom. Scum Squad, right, started in, like, 2008, 2009. Shout out to my man, Els Presley. That's my brother. And shout out to my brother, Sticks Dipper. They're both brothers. And then shout out to my other brother, um, Joe Nass. That's Stick bro Sticks brother and Els cousin. Yeah. That's the original Scum Squad niggas. And then they brought me in in 2009. Scum Squad was really some gang shit. Okay. Um, that was us as young blood niggas trying to break away from, uh, you know, our normal protocol and shit like that because we was all from different neighborhoods and whatever like that so we all try to break away and just do some some rebel shit and just be our own people you know what i'm saying yeah. and not not answer to nobody and, and you know and that's how that was the origins of that but we it was also, a subset scum squad was a subset of your larger unit not even really scum squad was a breakaway set like it was like a it was like a breakaway unit like we wasn't even a set it wasn't nothing blood related we would just also happen to be blood gotcha. we was just all foul niggas that fucked with each other you know what i'm saying like so that's why we called each other like and when i dress my niggas we called each other scummy or dirty you know what i'm saying like what's popping dirty what's, what's good scum you know like shit like that like that's how we address each other because we all been through that Everybody that I be around still got dirt on their shoes, bro, from back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not no rap shit. Scum Squad was some gang shit. And, and that held me back for a long time because uh, people wasn't comfortable with doing business with me on some music shit. You know what I'm saying? You can't go into an office and be like, yeah, I'm from Scum Squad Entertainment. Like, no, that doesn't work like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? You uh, uh, And a lot of the things that was happening outside of music was affecting my music stuff and our music stuff because we was all doing music at the time. Yeah. So fast forward a few years later and I decide we need to rebrand. I need to rebrand as an artist. I need, to, I need to reinvent myself. So what I did was I changed Scum Squad to 1-9, right? Uh, 1-9, the, the number 19 is the letter S in the alphabet. So 1919 SS Scum Squad. It's still Scum Squad, but it's 19 now. This is the entertainment branch of it. Got you. And let me you know ask you this. Do you record sitting down? Sometimes. Okay. All right. And and you think you get the same impact sitting down as you do standing up on mm. the mic? Mm. Recently, yeah. like the past six months, I've been recording sitting down. 
And that's I only record sitting down because I record myself. And when I record standing up, it's too cumbersome for me to walk back and forth to the computer. Right. Okay. All right. So I set my mic up like how you are right now, like yep. in a similar position. I sit down at my desk. My desktop is right in front of me. I sit the mic right down next to me. I'll turn like this. I'll spit my bars and then I'll turn back, boom, like that to the computer, like that. I never thought about, I used to spit back in the day. I gave it up a long time ago, but I, fake thug, no love. You get the slug, CB4, gusto, your luck low. I didn't know until I was drunk, though. though. You freak niggas played out. Get you fucked and ate out. out. Yeah, Prostitute yeah. Prostitute turn bitch, I got the gauge out. 96 ways I made out. Montana way, the good F-E-L-L-A. Verbal, Verbal AK, AK spray. spray. Come on, uh -huh. now. Uh-huh, chill out. Okay, chill out. That's, one of, that's my favorite Nas album ever. It was written as my oh, favorite Nas album man. ever. That album. Oh man! Yo, it was written. LA. You you, you want to hear some foul shit? Yep. It was written is the is is the first Nas. L I now up to that point of it was written. I had only heard Nas singles. Halftime. Uh, the, the world is you know what I'm saying the world is yours. Yeah. Uh, New York State of Mind. I was only hearing Nas singles because that was when I I'm dating myself. Yep. But I remember when Hot 97 in New York was like a channel that only catered to Hispanic people. They, they played mad freestyle music mm. and mad salsa music. Yeah. But I remember the transition from Hot 97 to catering to Latino people to moving into the hip hop uh, thing. I remember when 98.7 Kiss FM was hip hop. Yeah, yeah. Niggas is sleep, niggas is little, right? These are little niggas that are into what we do right now. We're done. Nice. Right. Okay. We're grownups. Right. So, okay. We established that. I remember that transition. I remember hearing Angie Martinez on Hot 97 the very first time she was ever on the radio. Wow. I listened to that broadcast because that's all I used to do. I had a little boom box that my mom gave me and I had a karaoke machine. This is where MC Hammer was out and shit. And the karaoke machine came with a hammer tape. It had too legit to quit. And have you seen her on it? And I used to wow. karaoke to fuck up them songs. Right. I'm dating myself. But those were the joints that I used to spit all the time. You know what I'm saying? MC yeah. Hammer was that nigga to me. Oh, yeah. I remember the Hammer cartoon and all that. Hammer was that nigga to me. Niggas came from Hammer. Seen. Hammer Hammer's was selling out fucking stadiums. And he, he had like he had own cartoon. Was Listen. selling out arenas. Yeah. And Hammer is a real nigga. You pull up on Hammer the wrong way, he'll smoke your shit. Uh, and Redman talked Oakland. about that. Redman talked about it. And full disclosure, I went to a fucking Hammer concert. Because the nigga was a juggernaut, you had to be there in the building to see how people was going crazy for this dude. Like, bro, the nigga had thirty background dancers on deck at all time. He could go to Denny's and hop out, nigga. The nigga could go to Denny's, hop out, and do a whole show in the parking lot with thirty background dancers. They with him all the time. Listen, listen, that guy. You know, what I mean, he don't get the credit that he deserves, but he was a, a real legit force in entertainment and you know yeah he had 30 dancers on stage but i mean the energy that he gave like that that translated to the whole we could go on about this forever but let me Ever. let me let me ask you this I, I noticed across your work that you were a straight bar spitter you, mm. you spit bars your demeanor is aggressive mm. first of all first off um will we get to see a more personal side of pro dillinger in the future and where does that aggressive energy come from my it's from my town bro it's from my town, bro. I'm from a little ass town, but it's like that. Like it's 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 like it's like that, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm from a very small town. What town? In, in, I'm from Havistro, New York. That's in Rockland County. I'm like 40 minutes from the Bronx. I'm like right outside New York City. That's why the last time you was like, nigga, you from upstate? I'm not from upstate. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm from Rockland County. Yeah. My my county is like a way station almost, right? Yeah. It's like everything got to come through here to go upstate and everything from upstate got to come through here to go to the city. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the jail is the same way. Like even the county jail, it's like niggas that whatever that's going upstate, they come through here first. You coming back down, you got to you, you might end up sitting in RCJ for a second. But right. it's like it's like a way station. Like we right here, but we not there. You know what I'm saying? Like niggas, some, somebody from out here could go to the city and smoke something and be back in time for dinner. So the aggression comes from the fact that that's just how you sit. That's the vibe of the city. It's just the town, bro. It's just the town. It's just the things I've seen. And just, I, I don't, I'm, I, I, I got to really naturally, like my demeanor, it, I speak 
like crazy, even though I may not mean mean it like that. My right. voice sounds overly aggressive, even when I'm saying something nice, you know, or talking to my kids or something like that. My voice is naturally like that, and I just pro- I project. You know yep. what I'm saying? Yep. But there, but it's also like you know things I've seen and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm like nightmares and you know just shit that just other shit. You know what I'm saying? Like that creeps up into my everyday shit. Right, right. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I played the song My Heater. Um I actually played it quite a bit. Uh that's a that's a collab with you and D Stallone. Shout Great out to song. D Stallone, man. He's a good dude. That's my dude right there. Shout to D Stallone indeed. Uh and how did that collab problems. come together? Talk to me about how that came together. He just reached out out of nowhere. Like the the record was hard. A matter of fact, I oh, you know what happened? I heard him spitting it he was spitting it over the beat like before he even recorded it he was like and i was like yo that shit is hard and it was over most beat most beats is on my label most beats is one nine yo okay got you that's crazy beat nigga. though crazy beat too right that's my young nigga though so I, as soon as i heard that i was like wait hold on hold on that's a what beat that's a who beat yo that shit is fire i commented on it the nigga hit me up like yo you want in how much you charge i was like nothing nigga for you nothing that's just oh, that's hard love. yeah I ain't charged East alone a dollar for that joint because the joint was, I knew it was going to be a joint. Listen, I'm going to say it. Y'all made history with that song. Fuck anybody else that haven't heard it yet. Fuck Fight anybody that. that but listen, songs fucking fire. Niggas be sleeping. I'm going to keep on playing a motherfucker until niggas get their ears right. What's the relationship between you and Snotty? That's my brother, fam. Like, that's like, yo, I, yo. It's like, almost like, yo, that shit is crazy, son. It, we couldn't be no closer if we came out the same woman. Like, that type of shit. That's my bro, son. Like, yeah. boom. What happened was, when I first, like, was trying to make my way into the underground scene, I had no idea what was going on. Like, he had just came home from jail, and he did Columbia Snow Talk. That was the that was the project that he had out at the time, right? Yeah. So, I just hit the nigga up. Like, yo, boy, that shit is fire. I don't know where the fuck you from, but we got to do a joint, you know, whatever, whatever. Da, 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 da. We end up talking, right? The nigga comes to my crib, bro, with all his equipment, and he pulls up with just his girl. Like, I, it's not even a crib nigga, right? At the time, right, like, my crib that he came to, I was trapping out of the crib, hmm. right? So it was always mad people in and out my crib, mad people on the porch. We used to be on my porch, like, 15, 20 deep, just my niggas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A lot of my niggas are still blood niggas. Mm-hmm. I'm not yeah. blood no more. You know what right. I'm saying? I'm scum squad. I'm one nine. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my affiliation. I am not on some gangbanging shit no more. That shit stopped for me in, like, 2015. Mm. But everybody around me is still like that. This nigga pulled up, mad homies on my porch, Mad people went out my crib, traffic, the phone ringing, my wife in there, all that, bro, dead ass. Baby, you remember this shit? Nigga pulled up with his girl. My wife's here. She could attain to the shit. Nigga pulled up, all his studio equipment, and his girl, and that's it. We went in my crib. We smoked mad weed, drank mad beers. It was like I knew the nigga for 20 years, bro. We did a joint in like five minutes. Are he there people in this lane, this... um? underground lyrical hip-hop resurgent lane that we're currently experiencing are there people in this lane faking like they don't really appreciate the sport or maybe on some other shit behind the scenes on some fake shit i mean my take on that is is you know the same take everybody has we can't you can't judge a book by its cover you know what i'm saying a lot of these Guys live regular lives. You know what I'm saying? Not to say I don't live a regular life. You feel me? Like, um, pardon me. Um, but um, as far as I'm concerned, I don't know too many of the guys on a personal Let's level. Let's get into this part. Let me ask you this. Okay. You've had interactions with artists in this yes. game. Many. Producers, publicists. Many. So have you found that in your interaction with some of them people that they shown you some shit where you looked at them like, you know what? I thought you was this, but now you're showing me this. Yes. And I don't fuck with that. Yes. And I mean, and I, and not just from people, cause I'm on the come up still. A lot of people like, I'm on the come up still, you know what I'm saying? But it's, it's like, 
my my time is is coming soon. You feel me? Like my seat is already there yeah. at the table. I'm just making my way towards the table. But in my experience, yeah, and it's more like the bigger artists that are like that. You know what I'm saying? The more popular artists are the ones that ain't really like that, you know, or whatever, and just trying, you know, and, and, and understandably, if you get money and you get into it, why the fuck you trying to be in the way? I, mean, dude, I, like, I can say it because I know nobody's interviewing me, but some of y'all niggas fake. Um, some of these niggas are fake. I'll say that too. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going yeah, right. niggas or whatever, but that's that. Everything is going to come to light eventually. You know what I'm saying? And when the world opens back up, rappers are going to be bumping into rappers and everybody that's bumping gums online and shit like all this shit's going transpire in one way or the other you, even as far as i'm concerned you know because I, I go to shows i pop out at events and shit like that and niggas be bumping it's, it's all it's all lip service bro nobody really want to do man shit yeah you know i'll probably bring my people with me because i know some people probably hate me for no reason i'm gonna have my people with me god got me too hey god got me bro <laughs> you know but most mean? of it is lip service mike you gonna pull up with your people just to have drinks because these niggas ain't gonna do nothing bro i know and listen i'll box one-on-one but i know niggas don't want to go one-on-one but i hopefully i don't it never has to happen but you said on twitter yeah watch this this is what you said on twitter niggas love to see you do good until you start doing better than them. That's a fact. And where I mean, that, where did that, that come from? What made you put that on there on that day, right before you put that on Twitter? What was you going through? What happened? It's a fact. Okay. It's a fact. You know, and you can see that shit all around you. And it's not even, and for me, that's a fact for me as a as a person and a man and as an artist. You know what I'm saying? These bigger, deep, like the guys that's already up, they love, they love reaching back down and being like, oh, this the next nigga, he's hard, this nigga is the nigga, whatever, whatever. And then let you start coming up and now you become a threat. You know what I'm saying? I said it in a joint. I said it on fucking Playoff Rondo. I said I slowly went from being a fan to being a threat now. The world is mine. Shotgun blast, leave him with chest out. Run the play and audible niggas to get the best route. I said that, bro. You know what I'm saying? No, like, but you also said something... <laughs> You also said on the song starting lineup, I've been doing dirty shit. My wife thinking less of me. That's a fact. What dirty shit was you doing? Man, you know, we all men out here, bro. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, you know, men are perfect. You know what I'm saying? Men are perfect. And 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 I'm that's not to say uh anything is specific, but I, I've made decisions. You know what I'm saying? Even doing uh, things that are unsavory, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm not talking about bitches and shit. I'm just talking about being outside type shit. You know, shit that my wife would normally be like, yo, don't do that, y'all. And I'll do it anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that's a real line. You know what I'm saying? That comes from a real place. You know what I'm saying? And it, it, it comes from, it comes from doing things that I know, you know what I'm saying? she wouldn't approve of, but I feel like need to be done. And shout to wifey for staying down, you know. My wife been down with me for 13 years. We've been married almost three years. She's right, my shout, best friend. Shout to the queen, of course. Facts. Salute. Shout to my wife. And she spit, too. And she nice. Really? Is she, is she better than you? I don't know. If you ever did your, if you, if you did your research, research, you would see I got her featured on Mega Foul. See, this is the thing. I, I might not have been able to hear everything, but we is going. I think we're gonna get to some of that in a second. I got um, it featured on Mega Foul. It's a joint on there called "Listen," and mm -hmm. it's me and my wife, and she smoked that shit, and she write her own shit and all that. I'm definitely gonna. I'm definitely gonna peep it out because that 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 has piqued my interest. Um, what's the thing that you're selling that makes Pro Dillinger stand out? from all the other MCs uh, jockeying to be next up. What's the thing that you're selling that makes you stand out, bro? I think the thing that I'm selling is that I'm not selling nothing. Boom. I ain't selling shit. It's just me. It's me uh, uh, giving people my old experiences mixed with my current life. You know what I'm saying? It's, a, it's, it's, just, it's just a sense of authenticity from the song, from, from, from the voice to the beat selection to everything, like my son picks my beats. You know what I'm saying? My wife proof 
proof listens to my records when I'm done listening to them. You know, like everything that I'm doing comes from, I record in my house. family affair. I like it. Yeah. Like my last two projects, my son executive produced. He got yes. the executive producer credits on my shit. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Um, you know what I mean? I love that. I'm selling, I'm selling the fact that I'm not selling nothing. This is real shit from a real nigga. And I'm, I'm trying to, I used to do things that I'm not proud of, and now I'm trying to leave a legacy for myself. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make that make things right. You know what I'm saying? That's where my music comes from. It comes from a from a good place. Like I'm trying to just make things right and, and share these things with people, and hopefully, it'll make somebody think a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You know what else you said on Twitter? What? You said someone asked a question. Mm. Name an album from an artist you like that you never listen to again, no matter what. Nostradamus. No. You said you said the last Nas album is what you Oh, said. King, yeah, the King's Disease shit was We disagree. Was, Card number 85? That shit was doodle crush. Ultra Black? Do you like Ultra Black? Yeah, I Ultra Black is a Kanye record, fam. Like that, I Hit Boy made the joint, but that clearly sounds like a Kanye West song and the song that okay, Kanye. Okay, okay, but it's done. a hot song, right? It's a good song. <sighs> okay, Spicy was and trash. Charlie Wilson, car a car number eighty five. That was cool. Wow. I need. Oh, I need. I, I, I need. Me, I, one day, one day, because I'm gonna come see where uh, you know I'm on the streets now. I'm traveling. I know. I'm gonna I come see you I'm, in Buffalo. I yes. see you moving around in Buffalo. I'm gonna pull up on you. Yeah. We're going to listen to King's Disease together and we're going to smoke. I listened to it with Mickey Diamonds. We listened to it twice in my I basement. Love Mickey when he came Diamond. To Yo, that's another one of my brothers that's on that one nine label. That's another you know one. You I reviewed his album? I saw that. It was dope. I commented on you on YouTube. I okay, commented on look, you. look what I did out of nowhere. Ain't nobody come to me. Yo, do one of those for me, bro. A review? Listen. Some people don't want me reviewing their shit. But I man I, review all my shit. Every time my shit come out, do one of them shits for me. <laughs> it's a lot of work. If it, even if it's trash, do that shit. See, people say that. No, like, I mean But that. I will. That you said that you told me to do it. Make sure you put it in my DM and say, yo, I need you to review this. All the rest of y'all, don't ask me to review shit. I'm doing this for this man. It's a stand-up dude. I've been talking to him for a few months. I know right. his fucking pedigree. My man Tomorrow done vouched for the man. My man D Stallone done vouched for the man. The rest of y'all don't ask me to, re to review y'all shit. I review what I want. But for this man, I'm gonna do what he asked me to do. Next album, put it in my DMs. I'm gonna review my it. Motherfucking for you. powers, the yes. intro king. I got okay. you. Thank you. And so I feel like it's a struggle for everybody in this lane right now, right? Niggas trying to eat and money is a finite resource. There's only so much to go around. What part of your vision is focused on what's next in terms of how you make your vision profitable? I right, boom. So <clears throat> there's things that I'm gonna that I'm gonna do within the next few months that I feel are gonna elevate me to a different plateau, even if it's in the same arena that I'm in right now, I feel like it's gonna, this is like the next six months are gonna separate me yeah. from from the pack. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like what I'm doing right now, um, it's in the works, actually it's in pre-production. Um, I'm gonna do a whole foul tape concert, but it's gonna be like a concert film, like a short film, but I'm gonna break it up into pieces. So part one's gonna be everyone's foul part two is gonna be too foul part three is gonna be most foul part four is gonna be mega foul and then um you know i release soul foul in uh in may um this is my rapid fire round right here so mm -hmm. i'm gonna need when i give it to you i, I need quick answers if you can give me quick answers okay um this is we we starting off with a tough one okay which you're not gonna give me the answer for let's just say that i already know you're not gonna give me an answer all right. Who's overrated in this space? A lot of niggas. Right, good enough. Which is the better anthem? Hip Hop Hooray or Annie Up? Hip Hop Hooray. Woo! Uh, if 53-year-old 53 53 year Mike Tyson challenged you to a fist fight for free, do you run or distract him with a raw steak? Run. Me too. Run like a motherfucker, and I'm not like fast. A motherfucker. No, I'm not fast either. <laughs> he different up here. Even if yeah. you thought physically you could do something with this guy, there's something else going on. Yo, imagine if Mike try, Mike pull up on you, and you like, yo, Mike, look over there, and you stall him as hard as you can. That's not even going to move him. 
not at all. Matter of fact, it when you start running, it might make him faster. Yeah, right. that's what I'm saying. Even if you stall him as hard as you can and catch him off guard, you might even buckle him a little bit. He's listen. still going to hulk you down. You're done. And listen, after fucking Buster Douglas put him on the canvas that one time in his career, he know what punches he could take and what punches he passed that. You're not hitting like Buster Douglas. So Kevin don't... McBride whipped his ass, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Kevin but he did McBride knock him out. Ass. He, he did out. knock him out. He, he did? did? Knock him out. Yeah, wait, wait. You're talking about Mike Tyson got knocked oh, out? Wait, no, no. Lennox knocked him out. Lennox knocked out who? Mike Tyson. No, Lennox, Lennox Lewis didn't knock out no Mike nigga, Tyson. you better go on YouTube, nigga. I'm going to Google that, the shit right now. That nigga was... Lennox Lewis defeated Undisputed Champion Mike Tyson by knockout. What the... Ass. Did I forget this? How did you forget that? Mike was bleeding all out his face and all that. Lennox put him right on his ass. I really got to watch the, the fight again, yo, because I and built Kevin him up McBride like, I'm like yo, he, he, no. he, he got caught slipping with Buster Douglas no. and nobody ever, oh my God, no. I forgot, I forgot. No. And I lived through his whole career. Oh, I'm, still in, I'm still in, um, what you call it? I'm still in um, rapid fire right here. Okay, so we right, agree, go. we're going to run. Is Drake a good artist or not? I love Drake. Incredible artist, I, I agree. I love um, Drake. His new song is fire. That I haven't okay even shit. heard it because I've been too busy oh, working my. on my own shit. But I got to Is it R&B or is it rap? It's a rap song. It's fire, though. It's a trap song, like trappy shit, but it's fire, though. I hey, you know who I seen on some trappy shit, though? Who? I seen on some trappy shit yesterday. I seen an E-40 video. I with, love E-40. With T.I. and fucking Joyner Lucas. Joyner got the first verse. Joyner nice. E-40, like rapid Rapid fire, duh, 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 like gone, gone. E40 cook everything though. Niggas don't know some. E40 been cooking shit since like the nineties, like ninety two, ninety three. Yeah, 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 absolutely. He sleep. Um, and he rich off rap music and liquor and all type of shit. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. You've seen my show before, right? Of course. Okay, what is my show most known for? Authenticity. Wrong. It's me crying. Uh. <laughs> What? I'm just, I'm just playing. Thank you for saying that. Oh, I cry a lot. I was gonna show. say authenticity or the intro. Yeah, and or the, yeah. This is yeah, but people do know me for crying. I'm just I'm fucking. Hey around. man, everybody cry, bro. You got you got to sometimes. You have to sometimes, bro. Okay. Music sometimes make me cry. If I listen to certain shit, I like it's uncontrollable. Like got, shook ones. Yes, I, yo, shook I ones. Know, yo, bro, I don't know, yo, bro. Something about that song, bro. Well, I saw them niggas perform that shit live at Summer Jam before Prodigy died. It was Prodigy and Raekwon on the stage, and then they came out and did Cream after that, bro. I almost died, my nigga. Yo, I almost did died. I do bro. an interview with that talked about that exact show. I ate a piece of Molly like this big. I swear Whoa. to God, it was my birthday. Whoa. I almost fucked it, yo, bro. I was in the middle of the like the aisle. I wasn't even in my chair. Or nothing. I was in the aisle like the stairs where people. You go down to different levels with no shirt on, singing shook ones at the top of my lungs, bro, ready to hurt. My something, bro, bro, somebody one day is going to pop some brand new fucking drug in the audience at Summer Jam when you on stage. And they're going to tell us. forward to that day. They're going to tell somebody else about, yo, I seen Pro Dillinger. I was fucking whacked out of my mind, you know, dude, tore the stage. Bro. I know you're going to. I can't wait to see you when you go live. I'm coming to your show. I'm coming to your oh show. Oh, my God, son. Um, yo, I, you, I, before the pandemic, I was performing live once a month in New Jersey. Bro, I'm going to come check Me and Snotty. I'm bringing my camera people with me, and we're going to do the damn thing. Believe that. I too. Um, I too. So is it, you call it soda or pop? Soda. Okay, I'm from Cleveland. Pop is for pop. Detroit niggas and Cleveland niggas. Cleveland niggas, yeah. Sexiest female rapper of all time. With the understanding Little. that your wife might be around, this is me asking them this because I need this content. Little Kim. Uh, most lyrical before, female before rapper. Before the surgery. Huh? Before the surgery. So who yeah. the most lyrical female rapper of all time? Queen Latifah. Okay. Uh, do you think they kill Pimp C? No. Pimp C died from drugs. Uh, playoff. This is not rapid fire. We in back in the regular questions. Playoff Rondo is a great album. Thank you. Why that name? And how do you that's, relate? How do you relate to Rondo? That's how I felt, son. Like, and you know what's crazy? I didn't even know the Lakers was 
winning the chip that year and nothing. Like, I had already named it Playoff Rondo from before that because the nigga Rye Beach that produced it, that's my young nigga from back in the day. But we always called him Rondo because he looked like Rajon Rondo. He used to have a straight back braids and all that shit. Yeah. The nigga looked like Rondo fresh out of college and wow. he used to ball. So we used to call him Rondo. But I called it Playoff Rondo. It's weird that that happened too. I called it Playoff Rondo, one, because of that, and then two, because... That's how I feel. Like, I felt like a salty old veteran. Like, during the regular season, I'm just chilling. I'll drop Lucy's here and there, whatever. But when it's time, nigga, my, my shit come out the gate, nigga, my numbers go up, bro. Because playoff Rondo was a real fucking thing. That's why, the, that's, why that's a phrase. Like, playoff Rondo, different than regular season Rondo. <laughs> exactly. And, and Pro Dillinger is the same way. Like, everybody know I could ball. But every once in a while, I have to show niggas again. Absolutely. I'm really, I'm really a veteran, bro. These niggas look at me like I'm a new nigga because I just been dropping shit in the underground for like two years. But bro, I've been, I don't want to, I don't want to age myself. But I've been at this for mad long, son. Yeah, I listened mad to you long. from, the, I listened to you from the past, and I've listened to you on Playoff Rondo. There is refinement there. Let me just say this because I, I do the research. I listen to the music. I seen you nine years ago. I seen you like yesterday. There is a refinement, okay, to what you've done. You've gotten better. Um, mm. What happened? What did you work on? What was the process? I just, I just kept writing. I just kept mm. working and just kept finding my own sound and just kept, I kept my shit true. Like, I like, yeah, on some of my projects, there was trap music, but I always layered it with, there was always boom bap shit in there or like, you know, just like, that New York shit, that flavor, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like I always wanted to make sure that that was well represented in my music because that's what, what I do. You know what I'm saying? The Megalodon album, um, the EP, um, or the Megafile EP you did with Megalodon. Who did the artwork? Sep. Sep did that? Yeah, shout to Sep. He did, he did the mega file artwork he did most file artwork and then he did scum god artwork that's some dope artwork um well so did he, did he ever uh talk about what that meant about the them that those creatures cannibalizing those two humans on that art what is that about it's like um it's it's like a like what he explained it to me it's like a like a biblical kind of thing you know what i'm saying like in, in most foul like if you look at the cover that that uh that creature that was eating the person or whatever, he was basically comparing that to me. He was like, "That's what you do, bro. Like these niggas don't understand how much of a beast you are, and you could just eat one any one of these niggas at any time, and it's, and and the crowd's just gonna stand there watching. If you look on the most foul cover, there's two people just standing on the ridge watching that. You know what I'm saying? Make a foul cover is supposed to be like my evolution as that beast. You know what I'm saying? like to where I'm really, really taking off and doing my shit where people are coming to, to make battle with me in my in, in my lands type shit. You got to come see me, nigga, because I'm really that nigga type it, shit. Right, and I don't, and I, I, I hate to toot my own horn, but I have to just say this right now for people that's watching Ooh. this, just everybody's clear. Respect, respect to everybody that's doing it. First of all, carrying the culture, that's my dude. That's my guy. That's my dog. Tomorrow, I call him the professor, King Low. You know what I mean? Barbershop Talk Podcast. You know, my man, um, uh, Marquis Walker, Triborough Gigolo, all these mm -hmm. guys. My man, uh, 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 Profile Pod, all these guys. Shout to the guy. You know, we not, I'm not talking about you when I say this, y'all. A lot of these niggas, they bringing people on, doing goofy-ass interviews, talking fuck shit. You see, we just got done talking about what was the significance of his artwork, and he broke the shit down. In collaboration, him and the artist, Sep, put that out there. The picture means something, right? right. This is the kind of conversation we having. These is uh, underground, lyrical MCs. Motherfuckers is not having these type of conversations. You got to understand. It's a fact. This man on the screen, like everybody else I bring on this platform, is three fucking dimensional right? right and so it's more that we could talk about besides what's going on on the fucking street who we like who we don't like where the beef coming from let's talk about let's get into this man's mind let's get to the yeah. fucking art of the shit you know what i mean who, yeah who's I, get offended fuck when, yes. I get offended sometimes when these videos get a little bit fucking slow because we having real conversations about this shit man I think it's um, goofy, bro. Who the fuck cares what's going on in the street and let me tell you something real quick just before we we, yeah. we, we leave that yeah um Sep, right? That's my nigga. He's from my hood. Like that. Sep, like my older brother. Sep watched my whole come up. Sep, 
ended up, Sepp used to be one of the, like, and he might get mad at me for saying this shit, but he used to be one of the, he used to be the nicest nigga in my hood. And like, like niggas used to be scared to battle this nigga, all type of shit. I was like 15. And in my hood, every year they do like a big ass parade. It's a Latin American day parade because my hood is predominantly uh, Latin, you know, Latin or whatever. Like I'm, I'm half Puerto Rican, half black. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but my hood is all Dominicans and Puerto Ricans. There's some sprinkled black people in here, but yeah. Havistro is all Hispanic people. So every year they do a big ass Latin American day parade. And that's where all the homies come. Everybody comes out. Niggas come from all over the county because they know all the mommies is going to be out and shit like that. Right. So. This particular parade, this was like before the cameras went up in my town and shit was still wild. Like, this nigga was in front of the bodega and he was just out there mad deep. It was mad niggas. Cause Sepp was like, you know, like 50 cent before 50 cent. Like, mad niggas was just around this nigga all the time. Hammers, always, it was always danger around this nigga, some type of shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was always lit. Like, he was that nigga. Like, and, um, you know, we knew each other from around. I was just a young nigga and shit. And, um, Nigga, one day, nigga, at that parade, nigga, I battled that nigga, bro, in front of the store, bro, in front of everybody. It was mad people out there. You know what I'm saying? It was Who on it, it was on video, too. Like, it was on video. He won. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not ashamed to say that. He won. But I did that. I was out there for, like, 30 minutes throwing, throwing darts at each other. He just had more darts than me. Because remember, that was that era where it's like whoever stopped rapping first loses. Listen, listen, let me tell you something. Cause I used to it wasn't that. like that smack you shit. Niggas you, know what I'm saying? you hear what he just told? He told you a hip hop story. This is him in the street on a quarter battling somebody. That's a hip hop story. In front of a bodega, some like some real chicken cool out, shit. Some of you niggas out here is fake. You don't love the fucking sport. You don't have stories like this. I'm sniffing y'all niggas out. Pause, right? The people I want to talk to on this platform, as far as MCs, real ones. I love that fucking story. You, you get it from the mud. You really from the essence of the shit. I appreciate that. Yo, um, bro, that nigga, that nigga Sepp took me under his wing, bro. And he really, like, showed me. I don't me. know why I thought this guy was from, like, Germany or... I don't know. I, I thought nah, he, was... he from the hood. He from my hood, bro. Like, he's from, like, my hood. Like, I remember walking around this hood with this nigga. We hustling for sandwiches and shit like that. Like, it was like that, bro. Like, I... I I really hope he don't get mad at me for saying this shit, but this nigga is like my big brother, bro. Like, the nigga looked out for me when I was a little nigga, like, made sure I ate type shit, made sure I was good, bro. Like, like that type of shit. You Respect to Sepp. He's an amazing, amazing artist. Respect. You know what? You're, you're, you're a Snowfall fan? I love Snowfall. I watched it last night. It was crazy. Me and my wife is on that shit. Dude, what, what, how many episodes did I miss? I just caught it back up to it last night. It's three. You missed three. It's I, Red Babe is the third episode, right? Yeah, it's the third episode. So I missed three because I watched last night. So that no, then you missed two. It's two. Okay, so I only gotta that. watch two. Oh, thank the Lord. All right, so we. So not wait, 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 babe. So is it four? Ep is it four episodes all together? There's three all together. Okay, man. so I need to watch two. That shit that was going two. on last night. Nigga, this nigga Leon, man. He's tripping, son. Leon bugging, son. Yo, first off, nigga, to be shooting at a nigga from that close, that's spooky, son. When they pulled up? You mean when the car pulled up? I'm doing an interview, yeah. Yeah, that shit was fucking crazy, son. Like Dude, when they started doing I was like, yo, dude. Yo, everybody, I thought Leon was going to die. Him and the big nigga made it, though. Like, his young nigga died, but still, yeah, I, I don't even, you think he's going to go to Franklin after that? Like, y'all need help? Dude, and I think I saw something in the preview real quick where the where the chick that was that's with the old I forget with the nigga with the curl, but oh 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 that's his uncle. Yeah, she was that chick was saying something in the preview about take him out and then deal with it. Like, is they about to take Leon out to a I, safe space and yo, then? Oh, I don't know, son. I hope not, cause I, Leon not even mixed in with them no more. Leon just want to run the projects. He don't give a fuck about nigga, what Franklin but the other doing dude, no I, cause I forget the name, cause I'm just not seeing the episode last. I've been waiting for a year for this shit to come back, right? And the dude rolled, rolled up on him and like, yo, when I had a problem over here with my people, I took care of that. I expect the same respect from you. So he telling Franklin, you gotta deal with your boy. Yeah, but Franklin already killed Kevin. He not gonna kill Leon, man. He already did Kevin dirty. You know what I'm saying? Kevin was bugging the fuck out though. But I don't think he gonna do Leon like that. And Leon's a rider too. And he got mad at goons and that big nigga's not gonna let nothing happen to Leon. Okay, but that big nigga last night just decided that he wasn't gonna fuck with Franklin no more. No, that was the that was the mercenary nigga that Franklin hired. 
Okay. Franklin can hire ten of them niggas if he wants to. I'm yeah. talking about the big nigga that be with Leon, the big black. Oh nigga. yeah, the big that big ass fat back. Yeah, that's his. That's his. That's his goon. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah, like yeah. Peaches. Franklin should be with Peaches right now, but Peaches got shot. Yeah, yeah. That big dude, he he is definitely a fucking ride or die. You know what I mean? But I when I somebody mentioned, I was researching you when I seen some shit about Snowfall. I love Snowfall. And I thought I thought to myself. And I forgot Breaking Bad. Come on, man. Classic. Classic. Sons Classic. of Anarchy. Yeah. yeah. Sons of Anarchy. What else was I Yo, watching? how do you feel about the Mayan show? That shit is fucking whack. What? What show? The Mayans. Oh, I haven't seen it. Because I've been Yo, doing this show. Shit, that shit is fucking whack. Don't even bother. Nigga, I haven't. Nigga, the nigga from the Mayans, like from the beginning, from the first episode, he a snitch. Like, nigga, damn. Damn. You ain't even wait. This nigga Jax didn't start snitching all the way till later. <laughs> and then hey. he like, and like he had to start selling something because Juice was snitching like crazy. Juice was telling all their fucking business. Jax had to say something. Your wife knows about this. I can hear her. <laughs> Yo, Gemma was trying to run the whole motorcycle club. This nigga Clay was bugging the fuck out. Like, nigga, come on, son. Yo, listen, and breaking bad for me. Because we talk, oh. we talk about some of the anarchy, the Mayans, but Breaking oh, Bad. Man. This I, nigga it Jesse. Me, it took me so long to get to that. And when I first episode I saw, hook. I had to go through. I had to binge watch the whole shit. Me and me and her didn't watch it till the shit was done and over with me for like too. two years already. Yeah. The shit was already been done. We watched that shit the whole way through, son. The whole Dude. season. Nigga, Better the Call Saul is not no slouch. Better either, Call bro. Saul is trash. You think so? Yeah, that shit is trash. You, Ozarks is fire. Ozark now? That's my show. Ozarks is fire. I'm waiting for that shit to come back. Yeah, when Ozark come back on, that shit is Because the very fire. last thing I saw on Ozark, that, that ice cold lady, they just fucking put it to her like, pow. I was like, yo. Ozarks yo. is fire. You know what you got to watch? When, as soon as we done with this interview, go on Netflix and watch um How to Stop a Drug Scandal. What, is that a documentary or like a real show? It's a documentary, but you have to watch it. I'm watching it, it tonight. I'll be looking for good shit on Netflix. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you told me. How to Netflix stop a out. drug scandal. And when you watch this shit, when you watch how this white woman was doing, yo, bro. Hit don't, me listen, back you said it's a like, documentary? Yo, yeah. Okay, don't, yeah. Do, don't do no spoilers to me. No, but just hit me back and be like, yo, bro, she was wilding. This bitch I is fucking. I definitely will. And I don't want no nothing else. Because I like to be going like fresh. Popcorn sitting there like, yo. Smoke something and watch that shit right there, son. Gave me some Netflix shit. I know what I'm doing. The universe works in my favor. I brought a hot-ass MC that's on the come up, that's next up to talk that real shit, and I got a fucking Netflix recommendation. It's powers. That's a hey. fact. Hey, listen. Um, but this is one of my couple, my last questions. What's pissed you off about uh, about this game? The that most. niggas is so fucking weird, son, and, like, fake, and, like, the whole tendencies. And you know what really, really make me mad? Like, that's a trigger for me. Like, I don't know, bro. You just fucked me up with that one. It's like, to me, this shit is like some cool table shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like everybody trying to be under the man that's under the man that's under the man that's under the man. I'm, I'm not with none of that shit. I'm trying to make a way for me and mine's on our own merit mm -hmm. without no cosigns or no big nothing. Like, no, we not on no team. It's just one nine. Pro Dillinger, Mickey Diamond, Snotty, Dark Arts, a lot preem, most beats, prospect, one nine. You know what I'm saying? A lot preem. This guy. Oh, my God, man. This guy with the bars. This guy. <laughs> Yo, that's my let me tell you about Preem, right? Yeah. Preem is younger than me, but he from he from my county. He's not from my hood, but he's from my county, right? That nigga used to come all the way out here, Dolo, just to record. Right? And then we we used to bump in each other in the same studios. And then we became friends throughout the years and shit like that, whatever. Like we stayed friends for mad years. Like mm -hmm. that been my nigga since like I got pictures with Preem from like 2000. He's incredible, and that, and that, and I don't want to leave Mickey out of this because we talked about our uh, review the album, Bangkok Dangerous Two. God damn it, son! But what you didn't hear imported goods? No, I can't listen. Oh. I'm behind on 30 albums at least. I'm busy. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. Imported <laughs> goods. Oh, and, yo, and um, shout to my nigga, um, 13 Cover Arts. He's the nigga that just did the new Lord Mob compilation artwork. He's on one nine as well. 
Woo! He's all Yo, so, so Flea put that up, right? And he's like, I need uh, cover art. And Mickey then, tagged Mickey tagged our artists in that shit, and then they ended up doing business. It was like a stroke. Of, it was like, you know, some. it was the universe. And you see how Fleet do. He's very stand-up about his shit. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's very stand-up about his shit. The business was very straight up. My man was compensated. You know what I'm saying? I don't have and anything bad to say about that crazy. transaction. Now, that's where all our art come from. You see um, snotty shit, that, the Hell in a Cell art. You know what I'm saying? I like, did. Yeah, like... Wait, Hell in a Cell, my... is, that, is that an album that's coming out soon? Or... That's coming out this month on the 19th, man. See? See? Hell in a Cell. It's coming out tomorrow. Hell in a Cell drops tomorrow. Yeah. That's snotty, fully produced by, by most beats. Welcome home, snotty. You so by the me? time they see this video, it, that, that album would have been out maybe it's three days. It's going to be out. Right. It's out so already. Now, boom. Snotty drops, snotty drops this month. Creasy is dropping April 19th. I'm dropping May 19th. And then me and Mickey is dropping Sting versus Flair June 19th. We got these whole next couple of months sold up. Let's go. One nine is in the building. Don't ever get it. One nine up. umbrella shit. Big umbrella shit. Yeah. So and I was gonna ask what's next for Pro Dillinger, but you already told me. So now I can end the interview by saying one nine is on the move. Next up to bat, you you heard it here first. Mike Powers, ain't no slouches done ever sat down in this chair talking to me, right. and that that trend has not been broken up with this particular interview. As a matter of fact, I put an extra stamp on this brother because the mm. energy. He been doing this for a long time, but he coming into his own right now, and y'all niggas not ready. Pro Dillinger, thank ready. you for blessing my platform with your pres with your presence, bro. I appreciate it. I really my nigga, it. I appreciate you having me. And before we go, I also like to say that I'm working on a. I, I usually drop EPs, but I'm working on a full length LP right now, fully produced by Finn from Gold Era and BBM. This shit is like 90% done. So right now, uh, I got two EPs and an LP dropping in the next couple of months. Snotty's dropping tomorrow. Mickey's about to drop again, the Polo Bear Confessions. You know what I'm saying? Most b has got another EP dropping. Me and Most is doing some shit called Boxing After Dark. It's about to get real crazy. One Eye one is in the building. Big Umbrella shit. Shout to my nigga Josiah. Shout to Big Trip. Shout to Mac. All the filthy animals. Shout to Luciano. Everybody in the umbrella. The whole one now camp. Everybody that's doing their thing right now. Shout to Mike Powers, man. The intro king, you heard? Oh, it means so much that you say that. I'm humble. And, and so thank you for saying that. Hey. Yeah, nigga. Our intro is gone. You're, the intro you just did for this interview right now, nigga, I'm using it. Nigga, that's skits, nigga. Telling you right now, nigga. I appreciate you. It means a lot to me. I mean, <laughs> Facts. It, it, it really does mean a lot to me. Um, listen, for all y'all that clicked this video, thank you for connecting with me. Think that. Now go connect with each other. I'm Mike mm -hmm. Powers. I'm out. Salute. What's poppin' is your boy Mike Powers. Mike.